Now on this Monday morning, the Jefferson County Commission had recently needed to appoint two new members to succeed the two members who were removed uh, by court order. And now uh, we have, uh, on Friday, we spoke with the first of our two newly appointed commissioners, Kelvin Upson. And today it's Dr. James Cook who joins us via telephone. Jim, good morning to you. How are you, sir? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you for having me. And I can't follow an intro like that, especially from the stubble-filled reputation. It's tough, too. It is. It's frightening. It's, it's frightening, Jim. It's, it's something. <laughs> I, I, I understand you have a military background as well, Mr. Cook. Can you tell us about that? I did. I, I did 20 years. And, uh, and if you're an admiral, you understand the term Mustang. I'm a yes. Mustang, which I did enlisted for about seven years. Uh, my final assignment was 7 Special Forces Group, and I ended up doing Green to Gold, where I was part of a group that was one of the first iterations that got selected for the Army to pay for my college. I went to Methodist, which is right outside of Fort Bragg, now Fort Liberty, and I commissioned into the aviation field, and so I flew Schnooks. Um, so right now the commission has two helicopter pilots on it, which is a rarity. I flew Schnooks, and then uh, the UH slash VH-60 was my final assignment out of uh, Fort McNair and flying the VIPs around D.C. That's yeah, cool. Uh, doctor, you got a doctorate in what, I ask? Yeah, it's in education. My research is uh, leveraging social capital to escape generational poverty. Mm, impressive. Going back to your Mustang, uh, yeah, that's the uh, the backbone of the military, the, the Mustangs, folks that come up first enlisted and then come into officer uh, ranks. Uh, great group of folks. I appreciate that. Maybe maybe bar one, right? <laughs> you got the Admiral's endorsement. That's off to a good start there. Thank you. There. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Also, the most important part of your background is that you are a Steeler fan. <laughs> Well, my wife was a former Navy wife, and so when we got married, she crossed over to the dark side of being an Army wife, and so I had to con to become a Steelers fan. It was a small concession, but here I am now uh, embroiled into the battle of QBs. Sweet. Is she, is so she's... you're not a natural Steeler fan. <laughs> <coughs> you're forced no, into it's... Steeler fanhood, <laughs> right? That was, I just, we're clearing this Coerced? up. Coerced? There's no such thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, but it's okay. It's a great place to land. Where's your wife from in, in Pittsburgh? Well, she's not from Pittsburgh. She was born in Brooklyn. Oh, so I see. if you could imagine being a Steelers fan uh, from that lineage. And then she grew up in Pensacola. And then she's been a government employee for uh, 40 years. And so if anybody knows about rebuilding, especially for the last decade, why not be a Steelers fan? Because we've been in the rebuilding season for a while. Well, you know what? This is what I like. She became a Steeler fan because of intelligence. She's not born in <laughs> Pittsburgh. She looked around the scene and she said, this is the best team out there that I will root for. I like that. That's a good attitude. And I'm an Army Ranger, so our colors are black and gold, so it just fits. It does. It just it all works together pretty well. Well, you have a fascinating background. Uh, so tell us at this point, then, why the interest in politics? So... My son is in politics as well, and he's in Virginia. And one of the things growing up with him, teaching him, is that we should never villainize our politicians. We may not like their ideas, but let's not villainize politicians, because why rob the opportunity of having one of your heroes be somebody who served the nation or the, the government in some capacity? So because of that, he ended up getting his master's uh, in, at Johns Hopkins in, in government, and he is uh, one of my best teachers now when it comes to politics. So I've endorsed him in his pursuit, and so when this situation happened in Jefferson County, um, I talked to him, and he became a really good advisor for me, and I said, this is something that I think is – you know." that needs some repair and maybe somebody like me can make a difference uh, in that, especially for such the short term, right? It's just an interim opportunity. And so they really, and I think Kelvin said it best Friday, and that is that we are servants leaders when we join the military, we're always serving. We're always trying to find an opportunity to build and, or to uh, make things better in the military. We're never brought in on a very, good situation. We're usually brought in in a crisis, and we have to come to solutions pretty quickly uh, to solve that crisis. I think about Katrina, when General Henri went down there with the 82nd, 
you know, so whether it's domestic or it's Afghanistan or, you know, any, any, any conflict around the world, we're usually come in to, we come in to solve crisis. And so I think Jefferson County had hit that level. And I thought that me coming into the pool uh, may be a good solution to solve that crisis. Bill Stubblefield. Yeah. Uh, good morning again, Doctor. Uh, you're you're appointed in the Mountain Party. Uh, ha, were you a mountain a member of the Mountain Party prior to coming to West Virginia, or is this a fairly new uh, uh, identity, or what? Right. So, good question. Um, it's new. The Mountain Party does not exist in Virginia. And when I moved from Virginia to West Virginia, um, that's when I got exposed to a lot of the other parties. So. I became a Mountain Party person two weeks prior to the commission, uh, the uh, interviews. Yeah, there was an article in the uh, Martinsburg Journal, I think, Friday or Saturday one, somewhat critical of that, the fact that you had a fairly new member of the Mountain Party and a couple of folks much longer standing were overlooked or not appointed by for the Mountain Party. I'm sure you I, read, I, you saw the article. I did. Yeah, I read that piece, and and the person that they uh, that she refers to also interviewed. It's interesting because all of our answers were identical. So when Commissioner Mashti gave us a, a grilling, really, because we're Martin Party and the platform is on the internet, um, I you know as a commissioner or as an interviewee, we weren't allowed to be in prior, but we were allowed to stay in after, and so I got to hear his answers. Um, unfortunately, his answers were, I don't know, I don't know. And so when, when asked, when I was asked, you know, do you believe in defunding the police? It was absolutely no. So I think, you know, a lot of the similar answers, we, we gave a lot of similar answers, but I was very, I was more decisive than him. So I could understand why the concern. And uh, I do not want to walk down another path till we get to more of the uh, pertinent uh, reasons for the interview today. But in a couple of sentences, what does a mountain party stand for? <laughs> Progressive. Yes. Um, I'll just use that one word. We are all in a position to progress, right? So whether we progress with human rights focuses or social uh, agendas or fiscal agendas, et cetera, um, we're all going to advance. We're all going to move forward. Uh, so I don't disagree with the, the idea that we're going to progress. So that's something I, I agree with. What I do have concerns with, and this is with any platform, with any uh, party, is that there are some things that maybe we don't agree with. And that's what I told Commissioner Mashti when, when he was asking. Not every platform that we are, or not every party that we're part of will have a platform that we agree with 100 percent. But uh, I, I do agree that we're going to make a difference. So um, that progressive direction is where I think we should go. Um, I'm a very conservative uh fiscally conservative, social conservative. Uh, so there's a lot of things in the Mountain Party I don't agree with. Uh, but that's there's some things in the Democrat Party I don't agree with, some people, uh, things in the Libertarian Party I don't agree with. and and But there are a lot of things in all these parties I do agree with in their, in their platform. It's funny you say that you're socially, physically conservative, and yet you uh, d uh, you shifted the Mountain Party. Uh, your predecessor, Jennifer Krause, did the same thing. She was viewed as a staunch conservative, but she converted the Mountain Party shortly before she was uh, forced to step down. So the similarities yes, between the two of you. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to ask her why she uh, no, did it, so I don't yeah, know. I, I, excuse me. I, the similarity being the fact that you were both uh, d identified as conservative Republicans, I assume Republican, as conservative, and then shifted to the Mountain Party, which you've identified as progressive. Yes, sir. So shifting parties is not uncommon in West Virginia. We've seen governors do it. We've seen senators do it. Um, so I think in this case, more let's focus on the ideology. Uh, we, Jefferson County Commission is functioning at, it was, was not functioning. They were, uh, because they didn't have a quorum. And I think that when a mountain party person was vacating a position that a mountain party person should, they should put, be installed in that position, I think it was important to keep the ideals there. John Gilstrap. Uh, good morning. Uh, did your shift to the Mountain Party, did you do that so that you would qualify to fill uh, Commissioner Krause's position? Because the, the the rules are, since she changed at the last minute for Mountain Party, it had to be filled with the Mountain Party position. So did that is that the reason you shifted over? Yes. 
Okay. And so, and prior to that, were you a Democrat or Republican? Republican. Okay. So the, I'm relatively new to West Virginia and the mountain party, quite <laughs> honestly, I had not heard of the mountain party until like three weeks ago. So is it, does it lean? The word progressive is, is kind of a meaningless word in the in, in overall. So when you, you say that you're um, fiscally, conservative uh, how does where do you, where do the where do the the principles of the mountain party part from say the republican party what's the, what separates the the two i think what's important is to see what they have in common i think what's important is that the jefferson county commission needs to move forward and i think that the commission was uh, stagnated or stifled so in that, we had a we have a responsibility to, to con continue with the balanced budget. We have a responsibility to uh, fund some of the initiatives that they're doing. We have a, a responsibility to look at the zoning and the rezoning. So I think that when we look at what we have in common, we want to make sure that Jefferson County is uh, set up for success and that the, the voice of the constituents and the people of Jefferson County are represented. I and okay, and I understand, but the, my my question really was about the Mountain Party. You you chose to become a Mountain Party uh, candidate or uh, to join the Mountain Party, so the Mountain Party must mean something to you. I mean, it can't it's not just a title. So how is that different than say the Republican Party? The Mountain Party. Let's go back to the first part of what I just what I said earlier. If it's okay. It was important for me to protect the ideology. Uh, Calvin Coolidge said that governments don't make ideologies, ideologies make governments. I think it's important that we keep a fiscal, social, conservative agenda. And I think that the Mountain Party itself, the platform, has a lot of things that go counter to that. I think they have a lot of things that go for that. For example, one of the questions that Commissioner Mashti asked is, do you believe in federalized or government-subsidized housing for homelessness? Well, my research in, in escaping generational poverty actually delves into that topic, and I don't think that the Republican stance or the conservative stance is necessarily the best stance in that. I don't think that the Mountain Party has all the answers either. What I do think is that we should come to the table with all parties, all voices, to see how we can stop a homeless crisis, right? A homelessness that I've seen because we have property in Phoenix and, and when we go to D.C., we see homelessness everywhere. And so it is a problem. I think that there are things that we can do to solve that regardless of our party. Doctor, your appointment, this is an appointment and it's a temporary appointment until um, until the decision with Jackson and Krause has been resolved. But your answers to me smack more of a long term as opposed to a very short term uh, temporary uh, position. Uh -huh. uh, what is your what is your thoughts? Will you if you have the opportunity, will you run for the, uh, the uh, Jefferson County County Commission? And if you do, what magisterial district are you are you in? Are you in one that will be it's co uh, currently uh, encumbered? So answering the second part first, I'm in Shepherdstown. So um, following Jennifer Krause's uh, vacation, it, being a Shepherdstown person, I can that that made sense. Um, the, the first part of that question, as we take targets, think about the military on the range, you know, you're firing at the 25 meter target, 50 meter target, all the way up to the 300 meter target. Right now, what's in front of me is the 25 meter target. I don't even want to think about the 150 or 300 meter target. We have to solve some of the issues now. I'm not considering any type of uh, run. The, I think August 13th is the magical date, and then after that, November 5th. Uh, if the Supreme Court create uh, stays this or puts them back in or however that works. I think August 13th is the magical date, whether or not it has to be put on the um, the uh, the ballot. Um, if so, then it's going to be up to whatever party to nominate who their candidate is. And uh, so I don't know. If I don't, you I don't see it. I know it's hard to play the what if game, but if if you do run, do you think you'd run as a Mountain Party candidate or a Republican candidate? Again, we're we're talking about the 150 to 300 meter target, so let's cross that bridge when we get there. 
Well, the 150 meter target is actually kind of at about 75 <laughs> yards right now. <laughs> it's it's August. As a guy that's looking at a July 15th deadline for a book, I can tell you it's it's, it's really close. Yeah. Our guest is Dr. James Cook, Jefferson County Commissioner, newly appointed in the Mountain Party. In the letter to the editor of the journal, written by Denise Binion Flemington from the Mountain Party, she stated that it, I don't know if it was a direct accusation or the implication that there was some type of collusion, perhaps a, even a conspiracy theory, that uh, you were selected and, and possibly the other appointee as well as a way of supporting Steve Stolifer and shoring up his support base on the Jefferson County Commission that this was not a legitimate appointment uh, in regards to the at least the Mountain Party, which she represents. Any thoughts on that? accusation i think that everybody has conspiracy theories i did not coordinate with anyone about this um i did make it known to people within the republican group i did make it not that i'm switching but that i was going to consider it but nothing was we never sat down we never had discussions we never conspired all at, at the end of the day is that we <laughs> that as i uh put my resume forward and then did the interview and then I was selected. So I do know that there was no conspiracy to do that. What do you see as the biggest accomplishments needed by this commission in the upcoming months here as you have a quorum of uh, a full commission of five now and it appears that you're all at least pulling in the same direction and uh, attending meetings at a minimum? Sure. I think we need to restore the trust and transparency. I made that clear when we had our last commission meeting that the constituents don't trust the commission. The the budget fiasco that happened, the uh, whether or not we're going to impose a fire levy uh, for the the, the uh, volunteer fire department. There's a lot of distrust with where the commission has done their business. So I think the number one thing that we can do is to be absolutely transparent. And, um, and, and, and to build that trust because we have to do commission business. We have to uh, govern in a way that's not going to affect people to where they, 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 they are concerned about their land. They're concerned about their money, especially in today's inflation. They're concerned about, you know, the commission is going to be a part of another government entity that's going to, to you know, raid them of their, of their resources. So, um, those are the things that I think is, I think that is the absolute paramount. The details behind that are the solar farms, the you know the tax levy, the levies of the, for the, the volunteer rescue, uh, fire and rescue association. The um, how to bring businesses back, right? That are concerned about the strength and stability of Jefferson County. I only have this until depending on August 13th, either November 5th or December 31st. That's a short amount of time to do a lot of business. How long have you been a resident of Jefferson County, Dr. Cook? Three and a half years. In the, those, are, those have been three and a half turbulent years, uh, by the way, in Jefferson <laughs> County, and maybe going back a couple of years before that when you throw in the Rockwool drama uh, as well. As a person who moved into the county and has spent three and a half years there, what do you make of the business climate in Jefferson County right now in regards to the ability to attract business to Jefferson County? That's a, that's a great question. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to catch up. That's a great question. I think right now we are not attractive at all. I think we're attractive to those that are willing to come in quickly and to do uh, things that may be concerning. For example, um, one of the solar – we have five solar projects that are on – the, if you look at the Jefferson County government page, and one of the advocates for that has sent me an email about you know the pilot program and the EA, EDA. My I have three questions. One, if we're bringing in solar farms, are they foreign or domestic? Right. I I am really concerned about foreign ownership of our resources, especially our energy. Two. If they're leased for 20 to 30 years, what's the plan to return the farmland back to its original state, right? I just drove through from Hagerstown through Sharpsburg and saw the solar farm there, and it's all rusted already, and it looks horrible. So is that what we want in our county? And so 
How are we going to maintain it? How are we going to take care of it? What's that long-term plan look like? And then three, is there some kind of private uh, public partnership that we can do? For example, could our schools get uh, completely energized from the solar facility that makes sure that, um, you know, that we're getting some kind of, uh, not compensation, but some kind of, you know, partnership that, that says that we're going to take advantage of having that kind of power um, facilities put into our, our backyard. I'm, for full disclosure, I'm a board member and a shareholder of a uh, solar company that does a, uh, a lot of work with developing countries. One country now is Tanzania. Well, we build solar uh, stations to help provide power for the, the local residents there. So I'm, I am for alternative energy, absolutely for it. I do caveat that with that we're not going to get rid of fossil fuel anytime in the next 50 to 100 years. Um, but I want to make sure that if we're going to bring in alternative energy, do we do so that at, without uh, jeopardizing what Jefferson County is trying to do. So to your original question, we need business. We need to be able to bring in uh, and become attractive again. And you can't do that without a stable commission in place. You use the term what Jefferson County is trying to do. What is that? We're trying to get back in business, um, back to the state of the county. I think we've done that. When, well, though, when, excuse me, those are very broad, very obtuse words. I don't, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Uh, for, for eight to nine months, the county has not been able to function at all. We almost lost our 911 uh, software. We almost lost our Motorola contract. We were at the risk of uh, not meeting payroll, so to speak. We had a situation with the with the budget. So to come back to this, right now we have to do some repairs. Is that broad? Yes, but those are specific. The contracts need to be paid. Bonds need to be released so that contractors can do their their jobs that were, was trying to create revenue for and, and, and jobs in the area. We need to assess whether or not um, taxes need to be levied. I had a hard time, for example, this commission, last commission meeting, the, I, you know, one of my jobs before I retired is at the Exo Battalion that had the, the first responders, the technical rescue engineer company. These were the engineers that draped the flag over the Pentagon that you see after 9-11 when that, those were my soldiers. Um, they are the skilled in six to seven technical rescue uh, disciplines. So I love, and I was part of the NIM system, the instant command structure. So I, I have a heart for what we do for fire to rescue all first responders in the ambulance. However, they asked to put a levy on the ballot, and the first briefing that I had showed a document that said that they were going to raise $12 million in five years, but they were going to control that, those fundings, which is interesting. And so when asked the question, um, we asked, can we put this off and do a survey to see if there's not a better idea before we bring a tax quickly to the constituents of Jefferson County? Um, afterwards, a member of the JCFRA contacted me and said, "Here's I'm contacting you as an individual, not as a member of the association. Here's what the actual document has. So I, you know, this is part of that process that we need to, before we put any taxes or burdens on the constituents, we have to do our due diligence to make sure that we're responding appropriately. The last thing we want to do, I think the last result, not the first response, the last result is to consider a tax. We should consider other options first. Dr. Cook, I want to thank you very much for your time here on the program this morning. And let me just say, uh, I, when I was in my young 20s, my roommate uh, in college had a uh, good friend who was a ranger who would come and visit us from now and then. Uh, and I can say that you guys, in the uh, what you do is amazing stuff, and you all have the same eyes, by the way, which is, I'll talk with you when I need to, but I'll snap your neck if I have to. So I can, I can, see, I can see that in your eyes. So, Bill, behave yourself next time you're asking him questions. Okay. Well, I appreciate you all. Thank yeah. you for having us. Have a good day, sir. You too. Dr. James Cook, 